We develop cutting edge technologies for automating and standardizing workflows in the embryology lab in order to improve clinical outcomes and patient satisfaction. So two reasons. First of all, leveraging our capabilities as a global life science equipment manufacturer. Uh, this was clearly you know, an attractive segment business-wise due to uh, social and demographic trends. Uh, secondly, on a personal note, I've also been afflicted uh, by uh, infertility. And uh, yeah, I feel it's, it's very important, you know, uh, business to fulfill its, uh, its, its social mission. So first of all, we are a family-owned business, and this enables us to plan and to act for the long term. We also operate a fairly flat organi organizational structure, giving a lot of autonomy to our you know, very dedicated team members from all around the world. And this enables us, in short, to focus firstly on innovation, which is uh, yeah, one of the driving uh, forces of, of the business, obviously. Um, and secondly, on uh, service and taking care of our customers and exceeding their expectations. The early 21st century, there are many, many, many unmet medical needs. So we would like to uh, do our part to address uh, and develop technologies to address these needs for patients. So that's the first thing. Secondly, um, yeah, the you know, seeing the organization grow, you know, uh, and, and of course winning. Biggest challenge has been, if we think about the growth trajectory that we have been on over the last, you know, 10 years, we've had to change, you know, um, yeah, I mean, the strategy has been, you know, yeah, has been consistent. Obviously, we review it, you know, every, yeah, three, year, three to five years. Uh, but the greatest challenge has been, you know, shaping the organizational culture and, and growing, you know, a, a global organization and having to um, even change the way that we, that, that we manage the business. Yeah, given that it, it's getting, you know, yeah, much larger, you know, and, and more complex, you know, more products, you know, spread over more geographies than in the past. So like with all fields of medicine, uh, there is a trend towards a greater personalization and, and, and precision in, in yeah, different care uh, pathways. Yeah, this is the first one I would like to talk about. Uh, secondly, given uh, current uh, social and demographic trends, we may just very well be only at the beginning of a uh, huge you know, boom in, uh, in, in the demand for fertility services and technologies. For example, uh, in um, many uh, yeah, countries and, and jurisdictions, Younger uh, females are deciding to preserve their fertility even as early as, as starting from their 20s. It is also now possible uh, technologically, uh, although the ethics you know, and, and the legalities of it are still being worked out, but it is now possible technologically to uh, edit the germline. So maybe one day in the near future it will even be unethical uh, not to use these latest technologies in order to prevent uh, genetic disorders that, that could otherwise be prevented. Yeah, and, and this would obviously necessitate uh, the need for uh, yeah, embryo culturing and, and IVF related technologies.